one of the great Easter traditions is the Easter egg hunt. Children love it. Somebody shouts, Go! The children start looking frantically for the Easter eggs. They look in all the obvious places where they think the Easter eggs might be hidden. Slowly but surely, the children are led by the clues around the house and eventually to the place where at last they find the beautifully colored Easter eggs. Soon their bags are full. The long search is over. The reason why the children can't find any Easter eggs for a long time is because they are looking for them in the wrong places. This was the experience of the women on the first Easter Sunday when they made their way to the tomb at the crack of dawn with the intention of completing the burial of Jesus by anointing his body with the spices and perfumes they had prepared. This was a Jewish custom. When they arrived at the tomb, they discovered to their amazement that the large stone outside the tomb had already been rolled away. The woman didn't hesitate to go inside with the hope of finding the body of Jesus. When they entered the tomb, to their amazement, they couldn't find the body. It wasn't there. Not unnaturally, the women were, as the New English Bible puts it, utterly at a loss. Or to use another word, they were flabbergasted. Suddenly, two men in dazzling garments, they were angels, they appeared and spoke to the women and asked them a startling question. Luke chapter 24 and verse 5b. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The men, or the angels, they give an explanation in verse 6a. He is not here. He has risen. Eugene Peterson in the message paraphrase puts our text like this. Why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? The men told the women that they were making two mistakes. The first was that they were looking in the wrong place. The second was that they were looking for the wrong thing. On the face of it, the question which the two men put to the women is puzzling. There is no evidence in the story that the women were looking for a living person. There appears to be no doubt that they were looking for a dead person. These were the very same women who had watched Jesus die on Friday. They had been nearby as Jesus breathed his last. On the cross, they had watched on as a spear was stabbed up into his chest and blood and water flowed out. This was a sure sign of death, and they had observed it. Pilate willingly released the body of Jesus to Joseph of Arimathea. 
These women were first-hand witnesses of Jesus' burial. They had seen Jesus' body being wrapped up in linen cloths and placed in the tomb. There was no doubt about it. Jesus was well and truly dead. Now on the following Sunday morning, the women made their way to the tomb, prepared with spices and perfumes to anoint a corpse. Well, where else would they have gone except to the tomb? They weren't looking for a living person. They were looking for a dead person. They hadn't come to the tomb to say hello. They had come to make sure Jesus got a proper, dignified burial. As they searched for Jesus... They couldn't find him. He was nowhere to be seen. According to the two men or the angels, the reason why the woman couldn't find Jesus was that they were looking for him in the wrong place. When we analyze the question put to the woman, the conclusion we come to is that On the first Easter Sunday, the women at the tomb were looking to the past. And they didn't dare peer into the future. They wanted to remember Jesus as he used to be. A vibrant, energetic young man whose ministry over three years impacted the lives of many people. They remembered how they had come to know Jesus for themselves and how in coming to know him they had gained new hopes, new convictions, new insights, new ideals, and a new allegiance. They could echo the words of the couple later on in the day who were walking on the Emmaus Road. Remember them? This is what they said. We had hoped that He, that is Jesus, was the one who was going to redeem Israel. The key phrase is, had hoped. It was in the past tense. The woman had experienced a special relationship with the living Jesus. They had enjoyed being in his company. They had benefited from listening to his teaching. But suddenly, the end had come. And it seemed as if it was all over. We shouldn't be surprised that the women were now, as they stood at the tomb, Facing the past. The women were looking for Jesus in the wrong place. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The question the two men or angels dressed in dazzling garments, asked the woman at the tomb on the first Easter Sunday, presents us here in St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church this morning with a timely challenge 2,000 years later. Perhaps some of us, maybe many of us, 
are looking for Jesus. But the mistake we are making is that we are looking for him in the wrong place. A common mistake many of us make is to dwell on the past. We seem unable to recognize the great spiritual realities in the present, let alone in the future. Like the women who went to the tomb, we think of our faith in terms of what it used to be like. We live our lives as if Jesus is no longer alive. The Christian life has ceased to be vibrant and exciting. We talk about the Christian faith our parents and grandparents had, as if it was some kind of relic from the past. We subconsciously feel that Christianity was alive and well in the good old days. But somehow it has died out in our modern generation. Those of us in the congregation who are older can well recall the great Billy Graham crusades in Australia way back in the late 1950s in Sydney, Melbourne and other places. And these great campaigns led to a spiritual awakening in this country. Churches were packed. Even lunchtime services in city centre churches in Sydney were full every Wednesday. You couldn't get a seat. We can recall the participation of many people in church activities. Christianity in those days was relevant. Church life was vibrant. Many of us who are older can remember getting caught up in the Christian euphoria that was widespread in Australia at that time. We compare this to the modern day when church attendances have markedly declined. Few children attend Sunday school. There are very few weddings in churches these days as compared with back then. Less than 20% of weddings are held in churches these days. There seems to be so little interest in the Christian faith. When you invite people to come to special events to hear about Jesus, they don't come, or many of them are not interested. And even Christians these days, committed people of faith, they too are very apathetic. All this has affected the average kind of worship that is held in churches each Sunday. We play the music, we sing the hymns, we say the prayers, we read the Bible, we listen to the sermons, but somehow there is something missing. Here we are, gathered as a large congregation in St. Andrews once again on this Easter Sunday morning, sharing in our Easter worship. If people from this local area, Forest, Barton, Kingston, Marica, Griffith, and so on, if they dropped into this service right now, would they ever guess that Jesus is alive? As they sat through this service of worship, 
would they feel as they observe our worship that Christianity is relevant to their lives? Many of our church structures and activities are designed to prop up a dead institution. They have little relevance for people outside the church and even many within it. And the people outside the church, remember, are the very people that we are trying to reach, even through an Alpha course. We're trying to reach them with the life-transforming gospel. Are we really feeling alive to be able to do that effectively? Many of us, sadly, treat the church as if it was a monument, a fixture that remembers the past. We've forgotten that the church is a movement which has life and growth and vitality. Michael Griffiths wrote this. Listen carefully. Christians collectively seem to be suffering from a strange amnesia. A high proportion of people who go to church have forgotten what it is all for. Week by week they attend services in a special building and go through their particular time-honored routine but give little thought to the purpose of what they are doing. The church is not a third-class waiting room where we twiddle our thumbs while we wait for first-class accommodation in heaven. It is a dynamic new community, winsome and attractive, and with an eternal significance in the purpose of God. If we look for a living Christ in a dead institution, we will never find him. Some people go to endless lengths looking for Christ in old historic churches and cathedrals, in ancient rituals and ceremonies, in the structures and practices of established denominations like the Presbyterian Church. But they cannot find him in any of these places. It's bad enough looking for a living Christ among the dead. But it's even worse looking for a dead Christ among the dead. That's the mistake the women made on Easter morning. They were looking for a dead Christ in the tomb, not even a living one. Christ cannot be found in a cemetery. On this Easter Sunday, we celebrate the glorious fact that he has risen from the tomb. Alleluia! Christ is risen indeed. William Barclay wrote this. It may well be that our Christianity has lacked an essential something because we too have been looking for him who is alive among the dead. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The two men asked the woman at the tomb. Are you looking for a living Christ? There's no point looking for a dead Christ. 
Neither is there any point looking for a living Christ in the wrong places. Perhaps I'm speaking to someone in church this morning and you have been searching for Jesus for years, for most of your lifetime. You agree with his teaching. You admire his values. You have so much respect for him. But you have not yet found him. The reason is because you are looking for Jesus in the wrong place. You won't find him in the institution of the church, you won't find him in a Christian heritage. You won't find him in a religious ceremony. You won't find him in any of the other world religions. Or even by paying lip service to the Easter story. No, you will not find Jesus even there. You can only find Jesus when you experience the abundant life He has to offer you through saving faith and trust in Him. You see, it has to be a personal relationship with Jesus. He is alive. And therefore, if you have a relationship with him, it must be a living relationship. So my message on this Easter Sunday morning is this, as we close. Don't go looking for Jesus in the wrong places any longer. Because if you do, it's a waste of time. He is not there in the tomb. He is gloriously risen from the dead. He's gone from the tomb. It's empty. On this Easter Sunday, don't look for Jesus In an empty tomb. You won't find him. He isn't there. Jesus is alive. As I conclude, let me read some words from Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18a. Words spoken by Jesus himself. He said... I am the living one. I was dead, but behold, I am alive forever and ever. I trust and pray that you will find the resurrected Jesus today. And you won't find him in the tomb. What better day in the whole year to end your search for Jesus by finding him on this Easter Sunday. Amen.